Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. In this video, <coughs> I'm going to go over a few things. I'm uh, going to talk about uh, how to sign up for the members only because th I guess like there's a bunch of people that don't know how to do it, so I'm going to show you where to find it. Uh, we're going to we're going to talk about my unfortunate recent video about Robert L. Millett, and I uh, composed a song for him, an apology. And then after that, we're going to be talking about uh, another thing or two that has come to light for me about President Nelson's comment about we're in the last half of the ninth inning because I'm not a baseball person and so th thankfully there's some of you who are and you were able to fill me in uh, with the greater significance of his statement so I'm going to share your comments with everybody. So okay so I took this on my phone this screenshot this is how it appears for me uh, of course so when you go to you see right here where it says home when you're on my my actual channel page Make sure you're on home and then you're not going to see manage videos or anything because that's for me. But I'm, I think you should, you should see this right here. Join our members join. And then <coughs> it has um, like the profile pictures uh, of everyone. That's not everyone, but like people that have signed up recently. So furthermore, if you're, if you're on <laughs> the desktop, um, it's going to look more like this. You'll see join right here. Okay. You won't see customized channel or manage videos. You'll just see join. And if it's not there, it should be right there, but it's, it looks like it's right here too. Okay. And then, um, and by the way, this isn't the total number of people. Um, so far I have 14 people, so that's pretty cool. Okay. Now you can also go down here. If you scroll down past my uploads and then past my featured channels, uh, after that, it's going to say members only, so you can kind of get like a, a peek at what the thumbnails look like. And uh, I'm, I'm assuming that if you try and click on one of these videos, it'll prompt you to sign up and become a member. Uh, I don't know. You'll have to let me know. So uh, the key, if you want to join, is to go to the home page of my channel. And so far, I haven't found like a like an invite link that I can put in the description, but... Uh, I feel like there's got to be, so I'm going to keep searching, see if I can find that. But anyway, that's how you do it. Now, uh, another thing, uh, I, <laughs> I I came down sick uh, on Friday. In fact, I think I was sick a couple days before that, so I don't know how long this video is going to go for. But I was actually talking to Joni, the Joyous Genealogist. She's right here under my featured channels. You just go over here. Joyous Genealogist is the name of her channel. Her channel is about genealogy. And uh, she said that she, she's been diagnosed with COVID. And she's been dealing with it for, uh, I think I think today's the eighth day, um, based on our conversation. Uh, her channel, I, I would encourage you to subscribe as well. Subscribe to Joni. Uh, this is her channel right here. She does genealogy, just like all things genealogy. And I'm, I'm sure that over time she might branch out and talk about a few other things. But here she is. And then this is what she looks like. Okay. So make sure to say prayers for Jody. Uh, I would ask you to say prayers for her, help her feel better. And just everybody that's dealing with sickness right now. But she could use your prayers. So I told her I would put that on the channel. Okay. Now on to... Uh, Onto Robert L. Millett. I, uh, okay, a couple days ago, um, on Friday, actually, it may, maybe this is why I got sick. I don't know. I made a video uh, based on an article that he wrote for uh, LDS Living, uh, this right here. <coughs> he wrote it on May 20th, 2018, so it's pretty recent. Uh, it's called Seven Things That Still Need to Happen Before the World Ends. And um, I, I critiqued it, and uh, I, I definitely didn't probably approach it the way that I should have. And so I present to you a song, and I hope, Robert L. Millett, that you see this and that you'll accept my apology. Take it away. Hello, it's me, Jared Davies, the YouTuber. I'd like to talk to you and go over everything that I said in my video I made a couple days ago. Hello, 
It's me. I'm in Kansas dreaming of how we used to be before I read your article in LDS Living. I know I could have said things nicer, but it doesn't mean I'm wrong. So hello from the other side. I, at least I can say that I tried to say I'm sorry for the things that I said, but not so much the things I said, just how I said them. It wasn't very Zion of me. No, it wasn't very Zion of me. So, I truly am sorry. Now, I do want to point out, uh, Robert, if you're watching this, or any family members, I have used um, Brother Millet's uh, articles, like in the Ensign on the channel before, like The Man Adam. It's an excellent article talking about Adam on Diamon. And I, I've mentioned him a few times on the channel. He He's good. He puts out, he does put out good information. So I'm not like anti-Robert uh, Millet. You know, I was talking about him all the way back when I still looked like this. When I was wearing the cowboy hat. And uh, pretty soon here, I'm going to be wearing this one again. This is my felt hat. You wear it when it's cold. But it's still pretty hot here. So I'm wearing my, the straw hat. It's like, if you don't know what that is, it's like the, the cowboy hats that are like cream colored. They're, they're straw. So they're supposed to be you know, better for hot temperatures. But anyway, um, I mentioned him here. There, there was a time, you guys, <laughs> in the very beginning, I actually responded in video format to every single comment. And uh, that didn't last long because I it just, I couldn't keep up with it all. But this was around, uh, well, this was actually October 30th, but me and my... <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, me and my family, we're the type that <coughs> we're not like big fans of Halloween. Um, and we do appreciate Thanksgiving, but we're, we're the kind of people that like Thanksgiving is Christmas one and then Christmas is um, Christmas finale. So yeah, we, we, we do this. We're, we're the reason it's us, people like us that make it so that Walmart puts out their their stuff way ahead of time because it's me because of me and i'm sorry for that you want me to sing a song about that i will okay so now I, I do want to explain myself um a little bit because like i said in the song i i do think i was right as far as the substance of what i was saying i just didn't say it very nicely and um to explain some of the passion behind what i was feeling okay so lds living okay um i like them just fine Okay, I'm very familiar with them. They put out good stuff. Um, but uh, there, there is a, a caveat. And I'm just going to kind of show you here on their website. Just pay, pay attention to, like, the aesthetic of uh, the pictures that they choose and then the, you know, the actual content itself. Oh, there, there's Robert L. Millet right there, actually. It looks like he does, like, a lot of stuff with LDS Living. There's John, by the way. Uh, David Archuleta. <laughs> <clears throat> I, I owe him a song too, I think, because when uh, Jeffrey R. Holland uh, talked to BYU last year, when the school year was starting, he came out and uh, told the BYU professors, like, hey, th this is not going to fly. You cannot keep going against church doctrine. Okay, we can fire people. We can uh, withdraw funding if that's what we need to do. But this university is a church-owned university. And so there was like a big you know, thing about that. Everybody reacted. And sadly, also uh, David Archuleta. Um, he did it right after uh, President Holland had just talked to BYU, and he basically came out um, softly against it. And I saw all sorts of people, you know, supporting, including people in my own family, by the way. And they're the type of people that these pictures uh, remind me of. J just look at the, and I'm not trying to paint with broad strokes, but sometimes you kind of can, right? There's always exceptions, but there's a reason why um, people <coughs> have the tendency to paint with broad strokes. Okay, 
let, let me let's go through some more uh latter day saint artist on inspiration be, behind stunning sculpture david archuleta singing um let's see gladys knight uh take a good look at this picture right here this like is kind of the epitome of what i'm talking about um the Bonner family's new original song inspired by Disney Pixar's Soul. Um, let's just go through some more. Okay, here's a athlete. Oh, look, here's a TED Talk in Salt Lake City. Uh, you know, support of this kind of thing. Um, here's Lindsay Sterling. She's like the violin girl. Um, I asked her for an interview, but that was like early on before I realized that I, I couldn't quite ask that yet. I don't know if I ever will be able to, but I, I'm, I'm still going to try, Lindsay. Um, you're not better than me, but I mean, you kind of are like in a material way, but um, please. Okay. Um, Elizabeth Smart on uh, The Masked Dancer, you know, a BYU Vocal Point releases version of Beat Out. You know, you look at these guys. Um so basically, and there's there's nothing wrong with this. There's nothing wrong with this. But this is a site that is pretty heavily focused on um, like LDS pop culture. And there's a lot of, that's, uh, I can't believe that they put that picture on there. Okay, whatever. So LDS pop culture, um, LDS integrations with the world which is fine because we can't just like withdraw from the world it's good to be like a positive um voice in the world and be an example but at the same time you can't let the world start to influence you and there's a lot of stuff here that's just kind of like feel goody just fluffy you know milk instead of the meat this this is a milky site okay it's a it's a very milky site Whenever, and I'm sorry if anybody owns one of these hats, but if you're a girl and you own one of these hats that are popular right now, you are generally part of this crowd. I, I just, I'm, I'm honest on this channel. I'm, I do not lie, okay? And I want to be nice. Are you a good person? I'm sure, look, Ash, Ashley Sargent, I'm sure that you are a nice girl. Uh, if you want to, let's do an interview. I'd love to talk to you. But, um... And I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm having a lot of songs I'm having to sing at this point. Um, so you get what I mean. So most people now, now let's look at the size of their audience. There's not way really for me to get the, the true size of it, but I can maybe use Facebook as a guide. According to this right here, LDS living, they have 300,557 likes. So that's a third of a million people. Uh, and for a church that's only about 17 million, uh, that's quite a bit. So if you have a group like this that's more focused on pop culture and, wow, you know, we have a, a BYU football team makes music video with pop popular Mormon... With popular Mormon rapper... Because, okay, okay, let's, let's, let's just move on. Um, if you have people that are, like, focused on these things, fluff, pop culture, and, uh, it, you know, we're all at different levels, but the important thing is that we keep progressing. Like, we shouldn't stagnate here. We shouldn't plateau at this level. And sometimes it's good to, like, go to sites like this, uh, going back to the basics, because you don't you don't ever stop practicing the basics. There's always room for practicing the basics, but you also have to progress beyond that. So if you have a bunch of people here that are on milk and then you drop a heavy article like this. Now, again, this is a group of people that most likely they don't really like to think about the millennium or the second coming. They Most of them probably don't understand. But like, like has been revealed to me. It turns out that there are members of the church. Okay, when I did my video saying, could this have been the last conference before the second coming? I got comments like, uh, I don't think it's going to be the, 
I don't think it's going to be this that it's going to be the last general conference if they uh, just announced a bunch of temples. So what that tells me is that that person doesn't realize that the main purpose of the millennium is to do temple work. It's a time when final families are formed. So people that haven't had their work done, um, you know, we're going to receive those records that we can't access on our own. Joseph Fielding Smith said that we're going to receive those records from the spirit world so that we can be, so that we're able to do the necessary work. That's going to be one of the primary activities of the millennium. And so if anything, uh, we're going to need many, many, many more temples, most likely, to do all those things. Um, I, I also got comments like, <laughs> I don't think that they would be calling for missionaries if uh, the second coming is soon. And again, it, it's a fundamental misunderstanding about what the millennium is. Because I think a lot of these milk people, and, and when I say milk people, again, there's no shame if you're a member, uh, if you're a recent convert. There's no shame if you grew up in the, in the church and you're still a teenager or even in your 20s or something like that. It takes time. But if you reach, if you kind of like are just at the milk level and you just plateau, you don't progress anymore, it's, that's not good because there's more that you should know. Heavenly Father has revealed a lot of things for us to know. Like he didn't have to tell us what exactly happens during the millennium. There's so many things he didn't need to tell us. I still don't really even understand why in the Pearl of Great Price he revealed the name of Kolob. You know, and there's like these alternate names for the moon, like Flowey, San Olea. Um, th th like we've been given probably more than we need. I don't know. But there's those of us that, that want to go further than just the milk. And um, it is proper to learn more about Heavenly Father's plan for this world. So, um, so this group, okay. I'm guessing that a good majority, you know, at least 60% um, are probably more milk people and have been that way for a while and um, <clears throat> are making little progress as far as like learning deeper things. And so they're comfy with their houses, you know, they're living in the suburbs, like they're they're living in the newest development, brand new homes. Everyone has a young family, a brand new school. It's just state of the art. Um, you have a pool and a pool house and you're going to Costco and shopping and you're going to the nearest entertainment district to watch IMAX movies. And, you know, life is good for you materially. You, you don't want that to end. And, and, you know, not that it's necessarily going to end. We don't know what things are going to be like during the millennium, but there's going to be the law of consecration, but we could all really have a lot of wealth altogether as a society. Because that's that's what it says about uh, the Nephites after Christ comes, that they they all became um, they all became <coughs> wealthy. They all worked together and their standard of living increased because, because of righteousness. So, you know, people like that that don't know anything about the millennium or the second coming, they see this and they're like, oh, phew, it's not even close. Okay, I'm going to go back to uh, playing Xbox. You know, I'm going to go back to playing on my virtual reality uh, Oculus or something like that. Because in here, um, there's a lot of things that I feel are not very, I don't feel are very well grounded uh the, the the primary of which is this one that baptisms for the dead <laughs> need to take place in the holy land um i looked at this i read the section to see if i was like missing the context because maybe it said somewhere else in the section that that was the case and that is not the case as far as i can see uh this is talking about how baptisms for the dead need to stop happening in rivers now it's time to bring them into the temple and so you know, and that they're going to be had in um, in the stakes of Zion and in Jerusalem. But it, it's not talking about this has to happen before the second coming. The day is going to come where when there are temples in Jerusalem where you can do baptisms for the dead. 
but I didn't see any qualifier that this has to happen before the second coming can take place. Uh, the church headquarters must be moved to Missouri. Uh, he says that it would be a, an enormous task. And, um, you know, any move uh, usually sucks. Uh, it costs money. It takes time, you know, especially the bigger the house or the bigger the organization. But I gave an example of Amazon. They, they did it. They created a new headquarters. And it's not a matter that you necessarily have to move. Maybe you just create a new headquarters and then just certain people like the general authorities go there and every, everybody else kind of stays behind to man Salt Lake City in the offices and stuff there. We, we have incredible technology now where we can talk to each other over long distances and you don't always have, it's not 1980 anymore where it's really beneficial to have the, to have the uh, church office building right by the administration building. You, you just set up a Zoom meeting. That's it. Um, and you can invite as many <coughs> as many people as you want. Um, let's see. Uh, this right here, I'm not, I'm not going to like necessarily necessarily blame him. Um, you know, one thing. Okay, one thing I think that gives my channel value is that we're living in a time when it's so much easier to look up information. It's so much easier. Okay, so for one thing, I can do Google searches. Um, there's the scripture citation index where I can look up certain phrases. So for example, if I wanted to like see, has anybody talked about this being fulfilled? I just type in, you know, for example, sun shall be darkened and the moon shall be turned to blood and put it in quotation marks so that it searches that exact phrase. And then it pops up and then you read it and lo and behold, uh, President Hinckley said that that's already been fulfilled. Um, so I don't know anything about Robert L. Millett, the kind of like methods he uses to search for things or if he's like really looked into this lately. He's obviously done a lot of work. He's written a bunch of books. He's a scholar. I'm sure that he's had lots of contact with general authorities. So maybe he just he has some uh, maybe in some areas that he thinks that he really understands maybe he he doesn't <clears throat> and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna blame him for that I'm not gonna blame him for this one I do think like if you're gonna put together a list of seven things you shouldn't put the one about baptisms for the dead in Jerusalem because I've never heard that anywhere in my life and when I was doing the preparation for the video, I checked uh, the Institute manual. I did searches. I can't find it anywhere, anywhere, you know, unless like he had like a conversation offline with like President Hinckley or Thomas S. Monson. Um, and they're like, you know, Robert, uh, a lot of members, when they read this section, they, they kind of like don't realize that baptisms of the dead have to take place in Jerusalem. So maybe that's why he has uh, the confidence to put this in here. But if that's the, like, I just feel like he he needed to put something more substantial than just like, look, go read this scripture because I, I don't think anybody has come to that conclusion reading that scripture. And I have never, ever heard it anywhere, ever. Um, also, these two, the gospel needs to be preached every part of the world, and congregations of saints must be found all over the earth. Uh, you know, I could fault him a little bit for that. And it's not like a, I think you're a bad person, but, you know, in order for these things to be declared complete or, or to be defined, that cannot come from... Robert L. Millett. It cannot come from Jared Davies. It can't come from Scott Palmer. It can't come from Troy Abels. It can't come from Joni. Um, it can't come from us. It can't come from you. It comes from the prophet. He's the one, you know, he may have an interpretation for that. Maybe it could be that no prophet has had that interpretation until it's about that time. So imagine a situation where this is like the general 
thing right here it has to be preached in all the world, but that has not been clarified. And then the Lord sees fit to have a conversation with President Nelson, and he says, this has now been accomplished. The time is over. Okay. So us, like for him to put this uh, confidently as though it's fact, I feel like it's not with his, within his lane. If it was the prophet or maybe a general authority, uh, yes, but no, not not as just a. And, and I I respect scholars. You know that you know if you've been watching this channel, I I rely on scholars. I always go to BYU essays and BYU material and scholarship and stuff like that, um, and other places too, uh, for Judaism and and everything. I, I, I see value in scholars. I see value in going to college, um, seeking for a good life. You know, I, I don't blame anybody for wanting to have a nice house. I'm just saying that sometimes that can produce the conditions of um, spiritual laziness. Because, you know, maybe you start out not having a good home, and then you finally get a good home that's nice and new and perfect. And then you set that standard for your kids. And then they sacrifice literally having more kids so that they can obtain that same standard. Only now houses are more expensive and it's less doable. And now both mom and dad have to work. So it can, it can spiritually affect you. And there's less time for studying the gospel you know, when you're when you're really concentrated on the world and getting ahead and having a nice lifestyle. So I already told you I'm, I'm a capitalist. I, I appreciate capitalism. I think it's the best system that we currently have that that actually practically works in our current condition. But we have to be careful uh, that we don't become spiritually dead and focus too much on the world and our possessions and status um and stuff like that so okay so <clears throat> so robert I, I think this is great sharing your, your opinion it just would have been nice if with some of this you had said this is my opinion or if you if you say something back it up with something that's very substantial okay because phrases like upon all the face of the earth uh, unless the Lord says this literally means every country must be penetrated. There must be missionary. He has never said that. We don't know what this, what the definition of this is. We have no idea what the definition of this is. Um, let's see. What was that? Upon all the face of the earth. This gospel, the kingdom shall be preached in, in all the world. Again, what what is the Lord's definition of that? You know, you may have your own definition, like, oh yeah, that's like every country. Yeah, of course. Oh, that that's every single language. Oh, well, that's uh, every single person. That's every single person. No, we we need clarification. So, it seems to me that these are general, the general direction that the Lord wants to go. We don't have the exact definition, but we just go keep going until he declares the work is done. And that's a good segue into talking about the, the ninth inning. All right, so I have two comments, one from Gary Evans and one from Forrest Mikhail Murray. Uh, Mikhail Murray. Mikhail Murray. Mikhail Murray. Mikhail Murray? I don't know. Okay, sorry, Forrest. Um, Gary Evans wanted to take, wanted to make a comment about President Nelson's baseball analogy. Oh yeah, by the way, because I'm not feeling good right now, I'm not, I don't want to edit that into, I'm already putting my song in here. So you can find it, you can find the recording in this video. President Nelson, we are in the last half of the ninth inning. I have the actual audio in that video. Okay, so in the ninth inning of a baseball game, if the home team is ahead, the game is over. In other words, they don't play the bottom of the ninth inning, right? That makes sense because 
they're the last ones up. So the home team is the last one to go up to bat. If they're already ahead, there's no point to keep playing. Like, why? Just to make more points? No, just the, the game's over. You, you guys won. So if we consider, <coughs> sorry, so if we consider that God's kingdom is winning, then the game is over. The bottom of the ninth inning is not played. And then uh, Forrest McK McKelmery says, just a thought I had regarding the baseball analogy. If the game is played in the bottom of the ninth inning, that means the home team is either losing or tied. Okay, so this is additional thing. So losing or tied. The game is over when the home team scores enough to go up by one or more runs. <clears throat> so just like one run above the other team. Being in the bottom of the ninth inning means the game can end on one pitch, or it could go on for a while. I believe he was insinuating that he was insinuating that we are moments away. Very exciting times, and that resonates to me because, you know, President Nelson. It, it's pretty clear to me that he likes sports because he's used the basketball analogy and now the baseball analogy, and he, he watches sports, and. Um, you know, he realizes that there's people out there like uh, Gary Evans and Forrest McElmory that understand the analogy. And, um, you know, these are, way of these, these are ways of just like giving us hints. And when you think about what they just said, Gary and Forrest, and you, <coughs> excuse me, you look up, you look at this last general conference where there was like this big push for... Um, hey, everyone go on a mission. All hands on deck. Everyone thinking about going on a mission, please go on a mission. We need you. You could say, like, hey, maybe maybe that's uh, the last... Uh, it's the bottom of the half. It's the home team's time, one last time, to go to bat. Where just everybody, everybody, final push. And then it's over. And uh, it could be that, you know, let's say that this group of missionaries, um, I'm wondering, I'm wondering how quickly, like, okay, so if we, if we go from April 2022 General Conference, most of those people that heard that, <laughs> if there, if there was anybody that was on the fence about going on a mission, uh, that was uh, persuaded to go on a mission, then let's see we're, we're right now okay so april may june july august okay so we're four months afterwards it's possible i think that some of those people may have received their calls by now or i i know that like the mtc it works on like cycles and stuff so i can't remember how all that works feel free <laughs> to explain it in the comments if you know how it works with the MT mtc but suffice to say that, you know, maybe between now and the end of the year or early next year, these people will receive their calls to go on a mission. So we'll be, let's just conservatively say uh, 2023, and let's just pretend that it's it's an elder, you know, so two years. So 2023 to 2025, roughly. And the projection for the Salik Temple to be completed is either 2025 or early 2026. So that kind of lines up, right? I think that kind of lines up. So yeah, we are in very exciting times and the Lord can at any point, he can at any point say, okay, we're done. Surprise, time's up. Because that's how it's going to happen. For for us, for you and me, that are interested in the signs of the times, no. We're not going to be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if it happened right now. Because I'm very open-minded. I'm not going to pretend to know for sure any prophecy. Um, that I understand it fully. So I'm, I, you know, I think that we should all act as though we're always prepared. And not think that we have we have time. You know, oh, don't worry. It's still however long away. So, but yeah, for all we know, <coughs> maybe he'll say it's done uh, short 
of 2024 or 2025. Uh, for all we know, uh, I've suggested this in the past that maybe this call up for missionaries, it's not for, it's not for the last inning. Maybe the maybe the game's already won. Maybe this group of missionaries are going to be the missionaries at the beginning of the millennium when we have our greatest need for missionaries. Because Joseph Fielding Smith, you know what? I'll just, let me see if I can find it. Joseph <coughs> Fielding Smith, other religions during the millennium. It, it should pull it up. Yeah, not all members of the church at the beginning of the millennium. So you, you have multiple, multiple, multiple people talking about not every it's not just going to be christians it's not just going to be members of the church um or sorry like members of the church christians jews it's going to be look at this joseph fielding smith doctrines of salvation uh, volume one page 86 some members of the church have an erroneous idea that when the millennium comes all the people who are, uh comes all of the people are going to be swept off the earth except righteous members of the church that is not so. There will be millions of people, Catholics, Protestants, agnostics, Mohammedans, that's, uh, you know, uh, Muslims, people of all classes and of all beliefs still permitted to remain on the face of the earth. But they will, they will be those who have lived clean lives, those who have been free from wickedness and corruption. So I had a question about this recently by Green Tree. Green Tree, if you're watching, see this is where this is what uh, President Smith says that because like we know that the uh, the millennial Earth is going to be a terrestrial in a terrestrial condition, but it's not the same as the terrestrial glory or sorry terrestrial glory where you accept Christ but you're not. So it's not it's not the same definition as those who go to the uh, terrestrial glory. We're still in mortality. Anyway, so he continues, all who belong by virtue of their good lives to the terrestrial order, as well as those who have kept the celestial law, will remain upon the face of the earth during the millennium. Eventually, however, the knowledge of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters do the sea. But there, okay, now look at this. Okay, think about this statement as we think about this last, uh, this most recent call up for missionaries. But there will be need for preaching the gospel after the millennium is brought in until all men are either converted or pass away. In the course of the thousand years, all men will either come into the church or kingdom of God or they will die and pass away. Um, he says later, I thought he was going to say it in that quote. Say in this chapter... Let's see. Let me do a search for great. Okay, here it is right here. So this is this is still Joseph Fielding Smith in Answers to Gospel Questions, Volume 2, page 200. Okay, so we are informed that these, although they may not be members of the church, who are entitled to the blessings of the terrestrial kingdom will be spared. Therefore, there will be millions of people on earth during the millennium who have not received the gospel. Missionary work will continue with greater vigor, greater vigor and power than at any other time. So, and, and Brad Wilcox, he recently said this February of this year, let me pull up his video, Brad Wilcox, and you really should watch this video. He talks about a number of things. <clears throat> he talks about the 10 lost tribes. This is the one where he says uh, that there's not a, a group of 10 lost tribes in a main group. Um, but he does a breakdown of Israel, how it works. He talks about Israel during the millennium how Israel is the government of God in the millennium. And um, he talks about here how Christ is going to come and he's going to announce himself as a member of the church 
and we're going to have billions of people all of a sudden want to join the church. So, and he, he kind of like, it's almost like he kind of leaked a little bit that the church may be concerned how to prepare for that influx of people, that large influx of people, right? So, anyway, he, uh, Joseph Fielding Smith continues, this work must go on until all who are on the earth either are either converted or are taken away by death. So, let's see, where was I at? Let's just go back here. Okay, so, yeah, I feel like it's one of two things, because I've never seen this kind of um, call for missionaries. I don't know if you have, <coughs> but I haven't. I've never heard of one like this. So I feel like it's, it's an event to take note of. Um, and I feel like you could say it's maybe one of these two things. Either it's the bottom of the ninth, and this is the final... It's the bottom of the ninth, and then the end of the game. Okay, then the second coming. Or the game is uh, over, or it's going to be over really soon. And then it's going to be time to to catch some fish. And I hope that we have big enough nets for it. So, um, yeah, that's it. So thank you, Gary Evans. Thank you, Forrest McIlmurray. I appreciate your comments. I'm sure that somebody else has already brought this up, but these two were easy just because they were like right next to each other. Um, again, I'm sorry, Robert Earl Millett. I, I hope you accept my song. In my apology, I know that you're you're a good man. You're such a you're a good man. Okay. Uh, again, say a prayer for Joni so that she'll recover from covid subscribe to her channel uh if you're interested in becoming a member <coughs> this is how you do it um we're gonna be talking about again you're not gonna you're not gonna miss out on what i'm already talking about that's that's gonna remain unchanged what's gonna be on the members only is different con content uh, i've seen a lot of interest in um people wanting to talk about like toxic uh, people, toxic personalities, relationships, but also I want to kind of delve into secret combinations a little bit more. I, I still can't go as far as I want to. Um, probably won't be able to do that until <laughs> until the second coming when it's okay to talk about those things. But uh, I'm going to do what I can. And so that's what I'll have my members only videos for. And th there may be some other you know, topics that come up that I'll, I'll save for members only. It's uh, $4.99 a month, but please, please do not feel obligated to do it. There was one comment where the lady was like, I'm so sorry. I wish I could help support you. And um, sister, you, you already are because I have my channel monetized. That means that um, that's why there's commercials on my channel. Uh, I get part of that ad re revenue. Or if you are um, subscribed to YouTube, because you can pay for YouTube and you get no ads and uh, you have access to their the music. So instead of like Spotify, YouTube has its own like Spotify type thing. Um, if you have that, I still get a little bit of that money too. So you don't need to... Uh, you, you don't have to become a member. It, don't feel feel like you have to. You don't have to buy my merchandise. I'm just, I'm trying to survive, trying to support my family. That's what Troy is trying to do with the Last Dispensation channel. And we love doing this. We love you. We love this work. You know, I, I honestly can't believe that I'm even doing this. This is like a dream come true. It really is because... Um, yes, I'm being compensated financially, but there, there's no other way that I could spend so much time researching, not just for you, but for myself. Th this has really benefited me quite a bit. I've, I've learned so many things, so that in itself is almost a reward, but unfortunately, we live in a fallen world where we have to survive. And so, yeah, I have, I have to monetize my channel. I hope you understand that. So don't feel obligated, but if you'd like to... Uh, that, that's how you do it. Okay, that's going to be it for this one. Uh, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. Like this video if you liked it. Leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Um, 
you're invited to join members only if you like. And I'll talk to you guys later.